Think about the future, about sea level rise, wildfires, civil violence, droughts, crop failures, all the doomer shit you read about on the internet. That's our world. It's our inheritance. It's easy to close your eyes to it, to pretend it's not going to be so bad and keep on doing what you're doing. For some of us, that means to keep trying to save the world as it is from itself. One green building or efficient doodad or innovative policy document at a time. But keep your eyes open. Keeping the future in darkness makes it scarier. And it is scary, but it's going to be full of normal human stuff too. Birthday parties, bar fights, backyard barbecues, DIY projects in the garage. These things are all going to exist alongside the catastrophes we're being warned about. It's not going to be some Mad Max film. It's going to be normal, everyday shit with some extra wild stuff every once in a while. So the world is not going to end. We're likely to live through all this. And we're going to have to adapt to whatever the future actually holds. So what kind of lifestyle makes the most sense in this future? What kind of choices can we make now about how to live our lives that will make this future a little better, a little easier for us, our families, our communities, than if we just kept living like, like we lived in the old world still. I think about this a lot. It makes me feel safer to think about and plan ahead for a different time and try to meet the future where it's going to be. I don't fetishize collapse. I just, I don't want to be a liability when things go sideways. More than that, I want to be able to help. I want to be useful. and I want to be able to continue living a good life, a life of meaning. This podcast broadly speaking, is about how to meet the future head-on, eyes open, cheerful and glad, ready for anything. Because I believe that this crazy, unpredictable, possibly very catastrophic, and maybe even terminal future we're headed into is nothing to fear. In fact, I welcome it. I'm glad of it. Even though I expect it to kill me, I wouldn't trade this time to be alive for any other because this time is possibly the greatest source of meaning in the history of our species. Possibly nothing matters as much as things matter right now. One thing's for sure, it's going to be very interesting. Welcome to Advanced Retro Adaptics. I'm Tyler Disney. So what kind of lifestyle makes sense? Well, there's a lot of options out there. Prepper, homesteader, community-oriented, transition towns, permaculture, earthships, urban agriculture, rewilding. There's a ton of ways people are approaching how to orient themselves to the future. I don't know which way is best. In fact, I don't think there is one best way. I think we should be pursuing all the options. I think a diversity of approaches is the most appropriate way to approach this. And also, I just want to live in a world where there's a bunch of people doing a bunch of different things, because that's just more interesting and fun sounding. But whatever approach one decides upon for themselves, it doesn't matter too much if you don't have the time available to pursue it. To my mind, taking a PDC course or beginning construction on your underground hardened greenhouse and goat farm isn't the first step. Securing your autonomy your freedom of action is the foundational step. Because most people aren't free, or not free enough, because they work a lot. 40, 60, 80 hours a week go down the drain of a job. There's just not enough time left over or energy. And often our jobs keep us tethered to a particular location that we don't think is the best for whatever our approach is either. So a lot of what I plan on talking about it's how to get free and stay free as quickly as possible. Because I think that the first step is clawing your autonomy back from this insane industrialized consumer society. <laughs> once you've got your autonomy, once you've got your freedom of action, then you can go pursue whatever you want. And I'm interested in talking about that too, but I think it's borderline irresponsible to talk about, oh, 
people should do this or, oh, people should do that. If you haven't shown them how to free themselves to actually be able to pursue it in a meaningful way. So my vision is a bunch of people who have freed themselves to pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue with their full energies, their full gifts. For most people, the process of achieving their autonomy, I think, looks like this. Step one, radically reduce your expenses. Look, low spending is magic, and anyone can do it. You don't have to get lucky. You don't have to get rich. The good news is that we've been lied to, and we just don't need that much money to live good, fulfilling lives. In fact, spending a lot of our incomes is paradoxically the thing that is preventing us from having good lives most of the time. The lie that purchasing things will make us happy. So slashing expenses exposes this lie and helps us attain a more grounded relationship with our own happiness. Incidentally, radically reducing your expenses means you don't have to work so much. Step two is to invest your time in attaining broad and useful skill sets. There's a lot you can do with skills to replace buying stuff. Because abundance in our lives is not just a function of money, as society would have us believe. It's a function of money and skills. So if you have a lot of skills, you don't need as much money to generate the same amount of abundance. So at first, I think we should pursue really practical skills to directly replace things we used to spend money on. So learn to cook instead of going out to Chipotle. Roast your own coffee beans. Change your own oil. Unclog your own toilet. Then, pursue skills that just interest you, that you might be able to generate some income from. Don't worry about setting up an LLC or anything fancy. Just have, hey, maybe a couple people would buy this from me if I took it to the farmer's market. You know, that, th that sort of thing. That's a great place to start. You don't need to overthink it. I mean, if you're the kind of person who likes overthinking things, don't let me stop you. But the point is that step two is to cultivate an ecosystem of skills. Now, there's a lot to all this in terms of implementation and execution, but I think these are the cornerstones of clawing your freedom back from industrial consumer society, attaining a better life built on a very low cost of living and an ecosystem of skills. Everything else flows from this. This opens the door to the world wide for you. From here on out, it's a choose-your-own-adventure. Another reason that low expenses and a broad skill set is the foundation is that it's part of the process of becoming a non-consumer. It's my view that industrial consumer society is a source of our predicament, not the source, but a source of our predicament. And thus, a sustainable society will be, among other things, a non-consumer society. And so becoming a non-consumer is part of the work itself. It's not just a stepping stone. It is the work, the core of it. And whatever you do from that non-consumer core identity is more a matter of personal inclination and taste from that point. If this show influences one person to take steps to attain their own freedom of action, I'll be satisfied. And we have work to do. The world's in a bit of a pickle, and it's all hands on deck. So let's quit farting around at some stupid job that hasn't made sense since the 90s and join the masses of people inventing the future with exuberance and a sense of adventure. It's looking like this century is going to be a wild ride, full of horrors, no doubt, but also full of opportunity for living lives full of meaning and joyful activity. Let's get to it. You can subscribe to my newsletter by scrolling to the bottom of any page on my website, tylerjdisney.com. If you have any comments or questions, send them to tyler at tylerjdisney.com.